Welcome to part six of building a new computer. At this point, the computer is already built and working, but what I'm moving on to now is reevaluating how I do stuff, how I record, how I edit, things like that, because the best time to reevaluate all that stuff for me is when I'm getting a fresh start, which I'm getting with this new computer, because, well, it's an entirely new computer and I've reinstalled Windows and everything. So let's clean house and figure some stuff out. First thing I want to focus on is Deciding exactly what quality I want to record at with OBS, how I want to tweak the settings. In the past, I've gone with something that's just kind of pretty good and it's fine and I've just left it, which has worked out pretty decently, honestly. But I would like to actually choose my settings when it comes to video quality based on real measurements and actually understanding precisely what I want. I want to examine how two different settings affect three different metrics. I want to look at rate control, CRF specifically, that is a type of rate control, and I want to look at the CPU usage preset. So I should explain exactly what these are. The idea behind constant rate factor is that there's a single number that represents the quality target that you're trying to hit, and the encoder will basically use whatever bitrate it needs to to reach that target. The closer this number is to zero, the higher the quality. Typical numbers are somewhere between 15 and like 23, 25, somewhere in that range. The second setting I want to look at is the CPU usage preset. So this is a long list of basically how hard your CPU is going to work to encode the video. The one all the way at the top, ultra fast, is going to be the fastest, the one that uses the least amount of CPU power, but also the one that produces the laziest result. And then the one all at the bottom is the complete opposite. From my experience, you're probably going to want to use something in the top three. Anything else is most likely something you're going to want to use if you're, say, encoding something offline, not in real time, like exporting something in Adobe Premiere or some other completely finished result. But when it comes to recording in real time, probably the top three are what you're going to want to use. And you'll see more about that later. Also, just a note about these names. So these names have always been terrible, ultra fast, super fast, very fast, faster. They're incredibly confusing and I always forget which one is which. So when I'm referring to the CPU usage preset, I'm just going to refer to it as speed one all the way at the top, speed two or speed three. So starting from the top down, speed one, two, and three, just to keep things nice and simple. So with these two settings, I wanna see how they affect the quality of the video, the file size, and the CPU usage. My goal is to find something that's reasonably small in file size, pretty good quality, and won't stress my CPU too much. The first thing I tested was changing the CRF from six to 20 in increments of one. Before I get to the results of those though, I wanna go over my test methodology a little bit. I wanted roughly 30 seconds of footage from a game from a scene that would be completely repeatable and also would be particularly hard to encode. So if I was going to see any compression artifacts from the bitrate or the encoding preset, I wanted it to come out in the footage. When it comes to doing repeatable tests on the exact same 30 seconds or so of footage, I decided the best thing to do is actually record that footage in extremely high quality and then do all the tests on my footage that I recorded from the game. That way, every single time I record it, I'm recording exactly the same frames. So if I want to compare the exact same frame between all the different CRFs, I can see exactly what's changing about the quality without it being from a different angle or something like that, which would make it extremely difficult to judge quality. So that made it very repeatable. And just to make sure that file sizes would be consistent between me recording my recording, I did these three test recordings. All of them recorded off of my original one here, and you can see the file size for all three of these are almost exactly the same. They're extremely similar. So it does produce pretty consistent results. And in the interest of choosing a scene that is particularly hard to encode that would show any compression artifacts, I chose this extremely high movement scene from the very beginning of Wolfenstein, The New Order. It's got all sorts of darker areas in the scenes. It's got very fast movement, lots of fine particles, like with the shower of sparks and debris coming off the plane. So it's perfect for showing compression artifacts. So let's go through the comparison images showing off the visual quality between the various CRFs and CPU usage preset speeds. So all of these initial ones that I'm gonna show until I mention otherwise are with speed one, or the laziest, fastest one to encode, the least high quality one. Just so you know what to look for when it comes to trying to spot compression artifacts, there's a couple particular areas to look at. I wanna draw your attention to this up here, just above the wing, this kind of darker, muddier spot. You can see it's very blocky in here. And also down here where it's all, this is like blurred out fire and sparks. You can see these very large chunky blocks around here. So that's what to look out for in particular. 
I'm going to keep this image completely still in the hopes that YouTube doesn't obliterate the quality and add compression artifacts that aren't actually there. Um, if you'd like to test whether that has been successful, this image should not have any visible compression artifacts. So this is on CRF6. If you look above the wing, and also at the blurred out fire on the bottom, I don't see any chunkiness or anything that looks like, well, a compression artifact. It looks practically lossless. It isn't actually lossless, but visually I can't tell any artifacts whatsoever. Moving on to the next one, we're going to go from 6 to 20. Again, these are all on speed 1. CRF 7. CRF 8. CRF 9. I'm just starting to notice a couple compression artifacts. CRF 10. Definitely noticing some artifacts. Nothing bad, though. 11. 12. 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. And 20. So between CRF 6 and 20, all on speed 1, we go from no visible compression artifacts to very, very visible compression artifacts. Although again, I want to stress that this particular scene is a absolute worst case. Most things that you record that are more calm of a scene than this will be much better looking. And even this scene here you probably wouldn't notice because stuff is flying all over the place so fast. So this really is a worst case. So even though the compression artifacts here at the worst CRF that I tested are incredibly noticeable and look pretty hideous, in motion you probably wouldn't notice them that much. Now I did a preliminary pass on this and thought to myself, what CRF, without changing anything else, would I want to choose just based on quality alone? I think CRF 15 is kind of my sweet spot in terms of just visual quality. Right after 15, this is 15 right now, right after this it goes downhill pretty fast. And especially if you look at the blurred out fire in the bottom next to the foot down here. Down here it starts to get really chunky really fast. Here's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. But if we back it down to 15, I think it looks pretty good. It's only a little bit noticeable, the artifacts. At this point, I started testing changing the CPU usage preset at two different CRFs. The first one I tested doing the top three speeds, speed 1, 2, and 3, at a CRF of 20, and speeds 1, 2, and 3 at a CRF of 15, because 15 seems sort of like a reasonable sweet spot for me. Now, a big question I had is, what exactly does changing the CPU preset do in terms of file size and quality? Because I was thinking, theoretically, with the constant rate factor, being a, a quality goal that it tries to hit. What happens when you make the CPU work harder to encode it and change the preset from speed 1 to 2 and 2 to 3? Theoretically, it shouldn't change the quality, right? If you have the exact same constant rate factor. So I was thinking it would probably just change the file size. Maybe it would be more efficient and make the files smaller. When it comes to quality, we actually have an interesting result. So this is CRF20 on speed 1. Here's speed 2, and here's speed 3. Interestingly, even with the same CRF, the quality definitely does change. It is significantly better when you go to speed 3 compared to speed 1, and even speed 2 compared to speed 1. Speed 1, speed 2, speed 3 looks significantly better. Even just on speed 2 it looks much better. Now here's CRF 15 at speed 1, and now speed 2, and now speed 3. So similar to when I had a CRF of 20, even with a CRF of 15, changing from speed 1 to speed 3, it gets significantly better looking in quality. So I'm noticing a significant quality difference between speed 1 and 2. Here's speed 2 now. It looks quite a bit better, especially if you look down at the the fire down here by the boot, the blurry fire. Much less blocky. Here's speed 1, speed 2. Speed 3 also does look a bit better, but not huge. I think there's a big difference between speed 1 and 2, and a small difference between speed 2 and 3. Now that we've looked at the visual quality of CRF and the encoding presets, let's look at file size and CPU usage. So I'll just get the CPU usage out of the way real fast. I didn't record down specific numbers for that, I just kind of eyeballed it. And I noticed that on speed 1, 
it usually used around 11% of the CPU. So very little of the CPU was perfectly fine. That's recording a 1440p 60fps at a speed of 1. At a speed of 2, it used somewhere around 20 to 25% of the CPU, so a very large increase. And at speed 3, it was using more around 40%. So just based on that, I instantly threw out speed 3. That's too much. I mean, I probably could do that, but 40% makes me a little bit uncomfortable running that plus the game. So I decided that I was going to stick with speed 1 or 2 just because of the CPU usage. Now when it comes to file size, let's just take a look at these first and then I'll look at these ones down here later. So these were all recorded at a speed of 1, the laziest, quickest encoding, which resulted in the largest file sizes. So you can see starting at CRF6 and going down to CRF20, the file size very dramatically and pretty steadily decreases in file size. Remember this is a roughly 30 second clip, so this file size here for CRF6 of, let's just round it to uh, 1.4 gigs, that would be about 2.8 gigs per minute of footage. Now let's look at other CPU usage presets. So for a CRF of 20 and a CRF of 15, I tested speeds 1 through 3 to see their effect on file size. And for 20, you can see it goes down in file size a little bit between 1 and 2, and then quite a bit between 2 and 3. Now for a CRF of 15, we get my one very strange result. At a CRF of 15 and speed 1, we have this file size, and then at speed 2, the file actually gets bigger instead of smaller, even though I'm having the CPU work harder. I don't understand why I got that result, I did retest it just to make sure I didn't mess something up and it always gave me this result. So in this very strange case, it got bigger. But then when I went to speed 3, it got dramatically smaller. As attractive as speed 3 is because it produces files that are roughly 60% of speed 1, that's very attractive, but again, the CPU usage is extremely high, so I just threw those ones out. And that's when I decided. The CRF of 15 produces results that I like pretty well. When you go to speed 2, they look even better. Uh, file size that's this big would produce, eh, if we're rounding a bit, we're talking like a little bit less than a gigabyte per minute of footage, so a typical 30 minute episode that I record, depending on how much I cut out and etc etc, many other factors, uh, we're talking an upper limit of around 30 gigabytes for a 30 minute episode, which seems pretty reasonable. So I like that, and with a CPU speed of 2, it's going to take upper limit around 25% of my CPU, which should be perfectly fine. So that is how I settled on the Speed 2 preset and CRF of 15.